uh, it makes sense, especially with teens and with adults, to have conversations about how we learn language and uh, why we do certain things in the class. Now, Carol Reed, the writer, the trainer, um, the, the teacher uh, who's written many course books and books for Macmillan, in one of her, her resource books for primary school teachers, she has this fantastically simple suggestion for explaining the purpose of activities. And she simply says that we should convey the purpose using the phrase, in order to. As simple as that, right? So if I tell my students, we're gonna read three news articles a week outside of class, articles from the web. I need to convey that purpose simply with a phrase with in order to. So we're gonna read those three news articles a week in order to improve your grammar, right? Or in order to deepen your word knowledge, or in order to build your confidence uh, in reading uh, authentic texts, right? And so we have this conversation so they understand why we're doing certain things in class. So as underwhelming as that might sound, that's the first step, okay? So uh, key one, conveying the purpose to our students in simple language so that they understand why we do the things that we do in class. Similarly, if I tell my students that we're gonna use flashcards and I want you to learn 20 words a week, they need to know why, right? And so maybe my target for the end of the course uh, or the end of the first year of study is that they'll know 500 word families, okay? So in order for you to learn those 500 words by the end of the year, we're gonna study those 20 words a week, okay? So that's, that's key number one, okay? Purpose, all right? So, good. Key number two is structure and strategies. Now, research tells us that students are more likely to engage in a language, a language learning activity if they feel that they are able to succeed, okay? This is what psychologists call self-efficacy. The idea of self-efficacy is that I'm more motivated to do things that I can do than to do things uh, that I can't do, right? And I'm sure we all feel that way, right? And so this implies that when we are setting asynchronous work for our students to do outside of the classroom, we need to set it up uh, or structure it in such a way that our students uh, understand the strategies or the steps or the processes that they're gonna go through in order to successfully complete the task. In short, they need to be able to see themselves doing the task, right? So if we can help them build this sense of confidence in their own abilities to be able to do the work that we're asking them to do, they're more likely to be motivated to do it and they're more likely to do it, okay? And this is the idea of self-efficacy, right? And so I'm gonna show you uh, three different examples here. The first one's really simple, right? So don't, don't stress out if you think this is too obvious. We'll look at some Slightly more interesting one, scaffolding is the key, someone saying in the chat, yeah. So here is a sequence from a course book. Now, I know it's a little bit small. My goal here is not really for you to read it. Uh, we're gonna do some reading later. But this one, I can just tell you that this is a writing task in which the students are going to write an article about two things that they like about their home, okay? So they need to write an article about two things that they like about their home. But in order to get them there, the first step in preparation is for them to look at a list of possible things to talk about and choose two items from the list. So they could talk about their bedroom or they could talk about their garden uh, or, or something else about their home. And then to uh, brainstorm, write down a couple of um, reasons why they want to talk about those two things. Okay, so that's the first step in moving towards this writing task. And then the second step, the students are given a table uh, which uh, describes the purpose of each paragraph and gives some useful language that they could use in each paragraph. And then they're uh, asked to add their own information in the my notes section. So 
before asking the students to engage in this asynchronous writing task, possibly uh, at home, um, before our next class, in class, we can go through this procedure carefully working towards this, this kind of final target task, right? Scaffolding, as you're telling me in the chat box. I was trying not to use too much jargon today, but yes, exactly that, right? Scaffolding. So this is one really simple example of how we can prepare students for success um, by making sure they understand exactly what they've got to do and providing structure to a task, right? Rather than just saying, I want you to write this article at home. I know none of you probably do that, right? But this is a very lovely example from a course book of how we can structure a writing task. Okay, so yes, too much jargon is bad. I agree in the chat, perfect. Now, second example here, right. Now, so I talked about the importance of reading and I mentioned the, the readers earlier. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell these, I'm just uh, using them as an example. Um, so maybe your school is a fantastic school and you have invested in readers and you have a reader program uh, where students are going to uh, read two or three or four graded readers every semester. And that's amazing. Good for you. I'm jealous, right? That's absolutely fantastic. For most of us, and particularly those of us that work in adult language teaching, any independent reading that we ask our students to do is likely to be web-based, right? We're likely to ask our students to go online. Maybe we help them find uh, sources of articles. Uh, and we will have the students uh, read two, three uh, articles from the internet, okay? Now, that may be fine for some students, but we might wish to structure the task in such a way so that students know exactly what they have to do. We don't wanna to get to the end of the first week and discover that our students didn't do the task because they weren't really sure what they had to do. Now, one way that we can do this and one really efficient way that we can do this is through what are called reading procedures, right? And reading procedures are steps or lesson or pedagogical sequences. There we go again with jargon. Sequences of activities which can be applied to any reading text, okay? And I am going to demonstrate, and you guys are going to do it with me now, a reading procedure, okay? So I just want to check that I've got everybody's attention. We're going to work together now on a reading procedure. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, so a reading pro procedure is a sequence that we can apply to any reading text, and it's going to reduce your lesson planning time, okay? Now, so everybody's saying yes. So... 600 people saying yes. Okay, brilliant. So, first stage in this procedure is to skim a text. Now, I imagine most of you are language teachers. When we tell our students to skim a text, what do they actually have to do? What does skimming involve? What does skimming a text actually involve? Tell me. For general understanding, yes, get basic info. Headings. Okay, this is what I'm interested in. Somebody said reading the headings. Keywords. Okay, so when, okay, it's difficult to really interact uh, on the, like this on a chat box, but let me give you my view. When I, when I tell my students to skim the text, and I know there are different ways of doing this, I tell them to just read the content words. Quickly run your eyes over the content words. Content words are nouns, main verbs, adjectives, lexical words, right? Words with meaning. Skip the grammar words. Just cast your eyes over those lexical words, okay? And so we are going to do this now. I'm going to show you a text, and I want you to skim the text, all right? There's going to be four pages, and I'm only going to give you 20 seconds, and I'm looking at my phone to set my stopwatch now. I'm only going to give you 20 seconds to look at each page. Okay? So you're going to skim the text however you want to skim it. I would suggest just look at the content words for 20 seconds. Then I'm going to change the page, and you've got another 20 seconds. Okay? Yes, teacher? Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. So page one is coming now. Skim the text, guys. Skim the text. 20 seconds to skim this text. 